We've been looking at the last couple of weeks at ways that God equips us or protects us against some of the spiritual viruses that are out there as we try to protect ourselves from the physical virus of COVID. One of those viruses, and perhaps the primary one, is fear. And so God offers us courage. Let's take a look at Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. The Lord is speaking to Joshua as he's stepping into the rather large sandals of Moses. And he says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Courage. It's related very much to bravery which is doing the right thing, even though we know that it may result in suffering, maybe even pain, and possibly even death. Bravery is doing that without the presence of fear. Courage is doing it even though you are battling fear. <clears throat> in these days we've been looking for uh, additional reading material. My vote for the great American novel is Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Uh, amazing book, one of the best vacations our family ever took following the footsteps of Lewis and Clark. We had Huck Finn on audio in the car, Hal Holbrook was the narrator. Huck and his companion, Jim, a runaway slave, need a great deal of courage. Huck likes to consider his issues as that of bravery. He doesn't think he has fear. But Jim, who's older, knows that fear is definitely a part of the equation, but he is willing to uh, act very courageously when Huck gets uh, shot in one of his adventures, and Jim is willing to risk going back into slavery in order to help his young friend. Huck Finn has been controversial from the day it was published, uh, in part, I think, because issues of irony and satire have always been hard to understand uh, at least by a portion of the reading public. Huck, however, is I mean, one of the one of the things about the book is his conscience has been warped by the culture around him, causing him to think at the very moment that he does the most courageous thing of all, helping his friend Jim escape into freedom. He believes he's actually condemning his soul to hell because he really has been badly shaped or at least only shaped halfway by the theological teaching of the widow Douglas and the church in pre-Civil War Missouri. Those kinds of things cause me to wonder, are there ways in our culture where we are only partially forming or misforming the character of not only young people, but people of all ages because of a misappropriation of scripture? So just briefly, one additional thing to consider as we try to follow in the steps of Joshua and to keep God's book of the law uh, meditated on in our hearts and minds, we need to think about the context. As we read a passage, where do we find it in the book? Where do we find it in the Bible as a whole? Uh, why is Joshua being told to be strong and courageous at this particular point? 
And in reading scripture, we need to think about not only what it meant, but then also then what it means to us today. What it means now can't be totally unrelated to what it originally meant. Secondly, <clears throat> there is a calling involved in the text. There is a way in which the Lord is typically calling us to do something or to recognize our identity. That's certainly what was happening with Joshua, and he is calling us to be strong and courageous as we look to him uh, and follow him wherever he leads. Where should we go? Who are we? How can we see God at work? And then finally, where is Christ? Because even in the Old Testament, he's not very far away. You read a couple additional chapters in Joshua, and you find the angel or the soldier of the Lord, actually, and that is very much a Christ figure that will lead Joshua as he heads into the promised land. Friends, we have decisions that will involve bravery and courage in many ways as we step into the future. And may the Lord grant you the ability to do the prudent thing. Courage is prudence with legs. And we can do that as we look to the book of the law. Our music for today, one song for Jim, one song for Huck, Jim Bobby Womack, great R&B artist, known primarily in the 70s and 80s, his very last release, The Bravest Man in the Universe, where the old uh, soul songster steps into uh, a techno world, kind of think of it as an airport, and, and uh, his answer to that. And then for Huck, the Avid Brothers, kind of alternative country that I could imagine him enjoying, a head full of doubt. Great music, great text. God bless you today.